The Baltic region was one of the most important anywhere in the world for the development of the science of paleontology, especially the study of Paleozoic rocks. In the middle of the 18th century, Scandinavian geology and paleontology were much advanced by the investigations of Carl Linnaeus, particularly by his famous journeys to Erland and Gotland in 1741. During his trips to Erland and Gotland, where he stayed a month, he described fossil corals and discussed how they might be preserved. The first systematic studies of fossils in Estonia were carried out by Edvard Eichwald, a private docent at the University of Tartu. His contribution to paleontology was remarkable, and between the years of 1855 to 1860, he released a monographic work, Lethia Rossica, an extensive study of invertebrates, vertebrates and plant fossils in Estonia. Now let's explore what some of the most common and spectacular fossils found in the sedimentary rocks of the central Baltic region are. Stromatoporoids. Stromatoporoids are a problematic group of large calcareous fossils that are very common in the calcareous rocks of the Paleozoic and easy to find on Gotland as well as in the Silurian rocks of Estonia. The largest specimens can be a metre or more in diameter, but much smaller specimens are more typical. They are often dome-shaped and can be seen to have a layered construction. Stromatoporoids were very important components of the reefs and reef-like structures found in the Silurian, such as on Gotland and the Estonian islands, and can be seen to vary their shape according to the energy of the environment they were living in. In Estonia, they can be commonly found in the limestone debris abraded from coastal cliffs in northern Sardama. Corals. The corals are a large group of rather simple animals related to the jellyfish and anemones. They evolved during the Cambrian but did not become common until the Ordovician and Silurian. Corals can be solitary or colonial. Although the corals of the Paleozoic are related to the familiar corals of today that make up reefs, they are classified in different groups, the Rugosa and Tabulata. Rugose corals can either be solitary or colonial. The solitary ones usually grew in a distinctive curved horn shape. The horn corals have a clearly ridged outer surface, which is related to their episodic mode of growth. Typical horn corals found in the Silurian of Gotland and Sardama are shown here. The tabulate corals, like the rugose corals, are only found in Paleozoic rocks. All tabulate corals are colonial, and these can range in size from a few centimetres to huge structures several metres across. Several types of tabulate coral are particularly common in the Silurian of the region. Favazites, or the honeycomb coral, and the two chain corals, Halocytes and Catinopora. Corals can be found widely distributed in the Silurian rocks of the central Baltic. They are also found, although less commonly, in the upper Ordovician rocks. 
arthropods. The arthropods are a major group of animals that make up almost 80% of living animal species. The group gets its name from the presence of jointed legs. Other well-known features include the often large compound eyes and the common presence of mandibles and antennae. Trilobites. Trilobites are the most well-known fossil arthropods and most people will recognise their distinctive form. Their body is divided into three sections, a head or cephalon, trunk or thorax, and tail or pygidium, of which only the second is clearly segmented. The trilobites were usually a few centimetres in length. However, some specimens found in Estonia grew up to 20 centimetres long. Most fossil trilobites found are the remains of molted exoskeletons and as a result tend to be fragmentary. Either the head, or more commonly the pygidium, is found on its own. However, one distinctive ability of trilobites was to be able to roll up into a tight ball when danger threatened, and they can sometimes be found complete in this way. Trilobites were exclusively marine animals. The first fossil records in the region, Schmittielis, are known from about 520 million years ago in the early Cambrian sandstones of northern Estonia. Trilobites diversified again during the Ordovician, but underwent a severe extinction at the end of the Ordovician. They diversified once more in the Silurian, where nice specimens of Calimony and Incranurus can be found. Eurypterids. Another type of arthropod occasionally found in the Silurian rocks of the central Baltic region is the Eurypterids, or water scorpions. These were relatives of the modern day spiders and scorpions, and indeed have a broadly scorpion-like appearance. However, they were marine, or later freshwater, and not terrestrial. Rare specimens of Eurypterids have in a few cases been found in the carbonate rocks of Gotland and Sardama. Scorpions. In 1884, Torell and Lindström published a description of a virtually complete specimen of the world's oldest fossil scorpion, Paleophonus nuncius. This 6.2 centimetre long unique fossil was found in the marine limestones of the Hergklint Formation in Visby, Gotland. Mollusks. Mollusks form a large group of marine and terrestrial and normally shell-bearing animals that include gastropods, snails and slugs, bivalves, mussels, scallops and oysters, and cephalopods, cuttlefish, squid, octopus and nautilus, together with a variety of lesser known forms. Gastropods. The gastropods are characterised today by the usual presence of a coiled shell, most well known from the terrestrial snails and marine whelks. Their shells are made of aragonite, a form of calcium carbonate that does not preserve particularly well. Nevertheless, they are quite common in the Ordovician and Silurian rocks of the region. Some gastropods, like Subalites subula of late Ordovician age, have quite a simple body shape, whilst others, like Oreostoma species from the Silurian rocks, have a highly sculptured shell with clear growth lines. Bivalves. As the name suggests, bivalves possess a pair of calcareous shells or valves that enclose the body laterally. Whilst they're not particularly common in rocks of the central Baltic region, 
they can be found in large numbers in certain deposits. For example, the large form Teronatella retroflexa is found in great numbers in the Bergsvik formation at Kettelvik on Gotland and Gramiisia oblonga in the limestones of the Ohesare cliff on Sarana. Cephalopods. The most commonly found mollusks found in the rocks of Ordovician age in the Baltic region are the cephalopods. Unlike the more familiar coiled shells of the later ammonites, these cephalopods normally had either a straight, narrowly tapering conical shell or a curving shell. Some species reached several metres in length. Cephalopods were actively swimming animals like the modern Nautilus and maintained their position in the water column by changing their density. They did this by pumping gas in and out of the chambers in their shell. They were probably the top predators until the jawed fish evolved sometime at the end of the Silurian. Characteristic genera found in the Baltic area include Endoceros, Orthoceros and Estonioceros. Brachiopods. Today, the brachiopods are a relatively small group of marine shell-bearing organisms. However, they are very common in the fossil record from the Cambrian onwards. The brachiopods show a superficial similarity to the bivalve mollusks. But whilst the two shells of bivalves are typically identical to each other, those of the brachiopods are of different shapes and sizes. Brachiopods are traditionally divided into two groupings. Inarticulated brachiopods, consisting of forms with a poorly mineralized phosphatic shell, and articulated brachiopods, consisting of calcitic shelled forms with a hinged joint between the two shells. Fossil brachiopods emerged very early in the Cambrian and quickly radiated to become one of the most common Paleozoic fossils along with the trilobites. Large masses of phosphatized shells of inarticulate brachiopods occur in the Upper Cambrian to Lower Ordovician transboundary sandstones in northern Estonia, forming in places even deposits of shelly phosphorites. As for the articulated brachiopods, strophomenids, pentamerids, brinconellids and atropids are quite common in the Ordovician to Silurian succession exposed in the central Baltic area. Atropids are probably the most common brachiopods found on Gotland, where in places they may make up to 80% of the local brachiopod fauna. Crinoids. The crinoids or sea lilies are a group of distinctive echinoderms that consist of a small head called the calyx that bears the mouth and anus, which are surrounded by a set of feathery arms. Many crinoids had a long stalk that attached the animal to the sea floor, which was composed of a large number of ossicles. Crinoids were very common components of reef-like assemblages in the Paleozoic, and their fossils are sometimes found in extremely high numbers. Some Silurian rocks are entirely composed of crinoid ossicles. A good locality for well-developed crinoidal limestones can be seen at the shoreline next to Kaugatuma Cliff in southwestern Sarama. Now let's take a look at some localities on Fora, Gotland and Sarama Islands where Paleozoic fossils can be found in place. Both Fora and Gotland are particularly renowned for large, well-preserved reef-like structures and their associated fossils. We're here on the island of Fårö, which is just north of the main island of Gotland in Sweden. And we've come here to look at remarkable rocks that are formed in a very different environment than that which we have today. 
Of course, this part of Sweden is fairly far to the north and has a relatively cold climate. But here we're looking at rocks that were formed in a very different way. They were formed far south of the equator in an ancient ocean that has long since disappeared. So we're looking at warm water rocks that were formed around what are very similar to coral reefs in the Bahamas today. Perhaps the Bahamas are the closest comparison we can make with the reefs of this part of the world. Very shallow water, very high energy. The main reefs themselves were slightly to the south of here. And what we're looking at is all the debris that was being washed off the reefs by the very strong currents, the wave currents sweeping over them. And all the rocks we're going to look at are full of these remarkable uh, fossils. Modern day reefs of this kind are formed mainly of corals. We don't have corals here, we have similar organisms, although they're from a different family. The animals here that formed the reefs were called stromatoporoids. They're extinct today, but they're rather like modern day sponges. And we'll see in these rocks countless numbers of, of stromatoporoids that were making up the framework of these warm water coral reefs that now exist in the Baltic. At this locality we can see quite clearly how different it was from the big reefs we've seen just up the coast. Only a hundred meters or so away we had the big reef mounds with those broken stromatoporoids, the sponge-like corals uh, living in a high energy environment. These rocks are quite different. You'll see they're layered, they're not mound-like. This was where the sediment was deposited originally and we're looking at channels that ran between the reefs. And you can see in some of the beds which are cutting downwards like this, this is the base of the channel and we can tell at this locality exactly which way the channel was running. It was running in that direction between the reefs. We have exactly the same thing again in environments like the Bahamas. There are marine channels, warm water, fairly high energy channels running between the reefs. The big difference is from the mounds that we saw up there where the animals had been broken up in the high energy environment that they may not have lived on those mounds, here we can see on all the surfaces uh, literally thousands and thousands of fossils that lived in the marine channels. They were abundant, mostly corals, small stromatoporoids and a whole range of other minute fossils. They are slightly broken because there was some energy here but nothing like the big reef mounds themselves. So again going back to the Bahamas example, large large mounds of unbedded sediment with massive animals living on there and fairly fast flowing submarine channels running between the reefs with this very very rich fauna, rich animals here dominated by corals. Uh, in some cases too by the way uh, fossils called uh, we call sea lilies, they're called crinoids um, that are stems of those as well. So we had a channel with rich life of, of small corals and sea lilies uh, living in between the reefs. We're on the east coast of Gotland, just south of the little fishing village of Hervik and opposite a little island called Östergarns Holm. And you can see immediately that the cliffs here on the east of the island are much lower than those we've seen on the west of the island. And the reason is that we have no large Bahama type reefs here in the east of Gotland. However, we do have similar sediments. You can see quite clearly here that in the cliff behind me, the bottom part of the cliff is formed of rubbly sediments and the top part of the cliff is layered. The cliffs are about two to three meters high. What is interesting is that the rubbly sediments at the bottom of the cliff are full of stromatoporoids, the sponge-like animals that make up the reefs on eastern Gotland. But here we don't have reefs. They were laid down in level beds on the sea floor. And then they were overlain by parallel bedded deposits, these thin limestones, that are extremely rich in fossils. And this is the big difference between eastern and western Gotland. Essentially there were no reefs here. The reefs were on what was then the seaward side, the open ocean side of Gotland. And this area on the eastern side of Gotland was pre protected behind the reef belt. There are several outcrops of fossiliferous carbonate rocks in Sardama, but we would like to introduce you to some of the best localities in terms of fossil richness and accessibility. This locality is called Kaukattuma and it exposes uh, rocks of early Predali, Silurian 
and it is not far of the well-known Kaukattoma cliff, which just exposes uh, coarse-grained carbonates, which are unique for the southern part of Saarema and also for the whole Estonia. This was actually a marine formation formed in the sea, but the sea was very different. The Silurian Sea was uh, warm and tropical here in the Estonian area, and the rocks here are full of remarkable large fossils called crinoids. These fragments of steams of uh, crinoid, a marine animal, are forming this coarse grained rock here in the vicinity. Uh, the species is most likely called Crotalocrinites uh, rugosus, and this is a typical fossil for the southern Saarema here on the Serve Peninsula and also in other areas. Uh, crinoids uh, usually disaggregate when the animal dies, and this disaggregating material is actually the uh, uh, material forming the rock around here. Uh, Crinoids have been very abundant here, and this suggests that the sea was likely quite shallow. It was dynamic with lots of wave action. And uh, crinoids, shallow sea animals, formed a kind of forest here in the vicinity. Uh, accumulation of this material in this huge amount, forming several meters of beds, actually means that the uh, similar conditions were actually persisting for a considerable time here. Crinoids are the most common fossils here. However, looking around, you may also see occasional corals, not in life position, but also overturned, which actually means that the uh, environment was really very hydrodynamically, very active. This is the Ohesare cliff. And this is the youngest Silurian strata we can recognize in Estonia, cropping out uh, actually a few tens of kilometers south of this place. In uh, Latvia, we already see the Devonian outcrop area. This is a shallow shelf section. Uh, the accumulation of uh, argillaceous and uh, pure carbonates alternating here was uh, taking place in a tropical sea. Uh, the limestones are actually uh, coarse grains, coarse grained, could be called as uh, grainstones or packstones, and the limestone beds are alternating with uh, more marly interbeds. The section is extremely fossil rich, and if you look in detail, you can probably find that the most uh, common fossils are actually brachiopods like it is typical of uh, early to middle Paleozoic successions. But there are many more interesting things in this section. In the middle part you can find uh, specific fossils, tentaculites, which, which look like wooden screws, a few centimeters length and thin, ribbed, conical shells belonging to some problematic animals. Approximately in the same interval, there are also some corals, but the coral fauna here in this section is not very rich. Uh, higher up in the section, there is a specific bed which is well known uh, because of a common occurrence of a bivalve mollusk called Gramusia obliqua. This is a shell a bivalve, bivalve, of bivalve animal, usually found together two valves. Uh, up to five centimeters in diameter and the accumulation in this particular bed is, is quite dense. You can find one, two specimens per meter when you walk along the section. Of course, if you're looking for fossils, there are many other spectacular outcrops to visit, not just at the places presented here, but on the other central Baltic islands as well. <laughs>